He's on the British side in Georgia. He's trying to keep the colonies in line. Well, he can keep all of Georgia. Theodosia, she's mine. Love doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints. It takes and it takes and it takes and we keep loving anyway. We laugh and we cry and we break and we make our mistakes. And if there's a reason, I'm by her side and so many have tried. Then I'm willing to wait for it. I'm willing to wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. My grandfather was a fire and brimstone preacher. 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 But there are things that the homilies and hymns won't teach ya. Teacher. My mother was a genius. My father commanded respect. When they died, they left no instructions, just a legacy to protect. Death doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints. It takes and it takes and it takes, and we keep living anyway. We rise and we fall and we break and we make our mistakes. And if there's a reason, I'm still alive when everyone who loves me has died. I'm willing to wait for it. Wait for it. I'm willing to wait for it. She was just like, um, like she was wonderful. Like she basically was like a college counselor to me. Cause I like some of my friends, like they like paid for college counselors. And I was just here with like Janet, who was like my personal like consultant for like everything. And it was like insane. She helped me write like all my essays. And she even like created like calendars for me with like deadlines. And um, she like would like remind me with like texts and it was just like the most helpful thing ever. Yeah, so she made like, what seemed like a very daunting process, like very manageable. Excellent. Like, uh, uh, I can go next. Oh, go ahead, Isaac, you can go. Oh, thank okay. you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so like I said, I actually moved here from Turkey. So the college process here is very different than what it is there. Um, so, and I, my math teacher actually mentioned T-squared and that's how I kind of found out about it. Um, and I had like some sort of an idea on what I was supposed to do, but I thought, you know, like I had this opportunity available to me, why not take advantage of it? And like pretty much what Amy said, like my mentors and the teachers there, it's, um, it's great to have like this close relationship where you can just kind of ask like these adults who know exactly what they're doing questions about what's going on and especially um since like common app like the fafsa it's just there's so many different components to it and it gets pretty overwhelming um so it was really like valuable to have that help available to me Yeah, like, um, I mean, entering junior year, uh, I kind of knew like uh, the T2 program was a thing because of uh, all the posters plastered all over the school and uh, college and career center, but I guess I never really thought of uh, applying. It wasn't until uh, Mr. Remedio, uh, like, uh, he talked to me uh, personally about it, um, said you would be a great fit, and this would be a really cool experience that I uh, really uh, consider it, and I feel like that has to be uh, one of the best decisions I've uh, made in uh, high school because I learned so much through uh, my uh, mentor, uh, Jeffrey Sung. And like, he literally uh, like guided me uh, through uh, the whole um, like uh, college application uh, process plus the, the um, uh, application process for uh, ROTC as well. So like that was uh, very, very uh, helpful. Like not, none of that uh, I would have uh, even found like if I did my own, uh, like Google searching, like some things that uh, you can only learn through uh, experience and well, like to have someone who has uh, gone through a similar process that like it's immeasurable that help. Excellent. So the next question that I had written down is also showing up in the chat a little bit, but 
for you all, what really worked well for you and your mentor? Um, and then we also had a question that was, what do you wish your mentor had done more of or less of? So, you know, what sort of things do you feel like worked really well? And maybe if there was anything that didn't work well. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, there's like, I feel like there's like two sections to this question, like before the pandemic and then after the pandemic, cause like so much was just different. Um, so before the pandemic, um, Jen and I would probably meet like once a week at like a coffee shop. And yeah, like I used to be a barista. So like, I love coffee. So like, it works really well for me. And um, I think, yeah, when we first started meeting, I was still like a junior. I hadn't really like started anything. Um, and she was just like, yeah, we should just make your college list. And so building up from that and just like getting used to the process of like doing research, because like I was I was like super unfamiliar with like how to do research. I had like no idea. Cause like what I thought was like, you go on the college website, you like look at like what they say, which is like for every single college website, they're going to be like, oh, we're like a great college. Like this, like, we're just like great. Like, it's just going to be like all good. Um, but like Janet kind of like was like, well, you have to like dig deeper. You have to like consult like US news and like all these other websites. So like the weekly basis, like meetings like really works well for me. And if I like had any other questions for like research, I would like text her, or I would like call her. And um, yeah, and then after the pandemic hit, we found that like Zoom worked really well. Cause like I could like share my screen for my essays and she could like share her screen if she was like helping me research. And we also would meet maybe like once a week. So I think like just setting up a time like when you guys are like both free um, would really work well. And then just like every single week um, reminding each other to like meet them. Yeah. Um, like for me, um, before the pandemic uh, started actually, Jeff and I didn't really meet that frequently. Like I think we meet, met uh, like once in a coffee shop in January and uh, once uh, on the T2 field trip to uh, to uh, Brandeis, which, uh, ah, shoot, I think you guys are juniors right now, so ah, scratch that. Um, um, it's a trip that they normally do, I guess. Uh, like if, We um, did, Isaac, we did a virtual version of it. We basically did what you guys had done on campus, but over Zoom. So they know what the retreat is and they experienced it, just a different version of it. I see, uh, my bad there guys. But um, anyways, uh, we really uh, started like uh, talking a lot more after the pandemic and uh, for me, uh, like uh, we mostly communicated uh, through email and sometimes a uh, phone call. And like, um, we talked about basically, uh, like we uh, went through the entire process. Uh, whenever uh, I got something done, I would uh, let him know. And um, he would uh, read over uh, some of my essays and uh, give uh, the suggestions. And like, every time there was like some sort of a deadline uh, coming up, like you have to get some uh, paperwork in or uh, you need to get a, uh, this is for uh, ROTC, but uh, like uh, the fitness, uh, like the fitness tests and uh, recommendation letters. Like every time uh, like we um, had a deadline coming up, we would uh, check in, make sure like um, everything was uh, on track. So that was uh, definitely very helpful. We texted a lot also. Yeah, so me and my mentor, her name is Sally Marks. Um, our main form of communication was mostly over text and um, Zoom or FaceTime. Um, that was like in during the pandemic um but before that we used to like meet over at the coffee shop stuff like that too um so yeah sally went over basically most of my essays um helped me with editing um like came up with ideas so that was really helpful um also marcia Cass, i can't respond to your chat for some reason but i would love that <laughs> thank you <laughs> Oh, sorry. I just wanted to like add one more quick thing. Um, I totally forgot to say this, but um, like the first half of senior year, the meetings were like much more than just on a weekly basis. It was more like every other day, just because like the deadlines of the college apps were like coming like so quick. So yeah, just like um, and, like the meetings are probably going to be like once every day. Like even like I would just like call Janet and like be like super panicked at like I don't know like ten thirty, and I was like I don't know what to write for my essay. It's doing like two hours. And yeah. That's amazing. It's so great to hear that you all had such wonderful relationships with your mentors. And I think a huge thing, you know, sort of thinking about what you're both all saying is the communication back and forth and the importance of responding, right, in a timely manner. Yes, Celine. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I also wanted to add it was really helpful for 
like, I don't know if this was the experience that everyone had, but it was really helpful if like when my mentor just kind of texted me and kept reminding me of things because it got so overwhelming at some point that I just forget about things. So um, if you are a mentor right now, I totally recommend you doing that. That's great, Celine, thank you. Um, so the next question, again, one that I had that's also showing up in the chat is, what advice do you have for the group at this point in the process? So juniors and their mentors, it's May of junior year. What is your advice for them? Um, I think I can uh, give um, give a crack at that. Uh, this is uh, strictly coming from my own experience, but I found it to be helpful to uh, start as early as you can on uh, your essays because uh, like those like at this stage, well, there's a lot of stuff you can do, but you can really, really uh, craft an essay and like uh, show yourself through it. And what I would suggest like in this time is really like, reflect on as hard as it may seem to reflect on like everything that's happened in your life like the past 17 years how you became the person that you are today like you could uh, read through like your old uh, school assignments or uh, go through like old family pictures or um, like even ask your parents to tell you like uh, old stories about you and uh, like really uh really like dig deep to find out more about yourself because like a lot of things that like shape you into who you are like they're uh, subconscious and like, it really does take some like looking deeply at it to figure it out. And uh, that's where you find the best uh, essay topics, I think. Yeah, um, I absolutely cannot agree more. Um, I think the best decision I literally like ever made in my life was getting my essay done before senior year started because it's just like such a big roadblock like out of the way. Um, and like reflecting off what Isaac said, like, I think the hardest part of the essay writing process isn't actually like writing things, but thinking of like a topic because like you have like 650 words, yeah, 650 words to like basically say who you are. And it's going to be like the college people's like only ever impression of you, like just like being yourself. So um, in terms of topics, like I, like I wrote mine personally, like, on um, how my like parents raised me and like my opening sentence like was like I think someone told me this once before but like yeah I, I think like my mentor said like um, that a way to like start your essay is just to like write a really like eye-catching opening sentence and it could also be like absurd so like my opening scene was actually like me like cleaning a toilet at my house which is just like so absurd and like no one has like any idea like why I did that but like it basically like it'll make because like these people are like reading like thousands of essays a day. Like it's going to like kind of like, catch their attention. They're gonna be like, oh, this is very different from the usual. Like, oh, here's like my first like memory of like kindergarten or something. It's like very like, oh, like what is this going to be about? So I think that would be like my biggest piece of advice. Yeah, I completely agree with Isaac and Amy's head. Unfortunately, I had a different experience with um, finishing my essay. I could not come up with an idea for my essay for so long. And then it just hit me one day at 3 a.m. in like in the middle of August. Um, so, and I wrote mine about Turkish coffee and like compared like the process of making it itself to my personality. Um, and I say like research, definitely research um, like the most common essays because you don't, want to do that um like amy said they're reading like thousands of applications a day you want something that like catches their eye um and get it like done as early as you possibly can and um the thing that i found was the hardest was actually like making it reflect a piece of myself i think digging deeper is the most important thing you can do um while writing your main essay um and I also suggest that you add your personality in your supplement essays as well. Like it's important to um, explain why you'd be a good fit to that college, but it's still a place where you should be kind of reflecting on your personality and what makes you different from others um, that makes you a good fit to that school. Um, also, uh, do your research about what colleges I say have a wide variety of things like schools to choose from because it's easier to just kind of shorten that list rather than like add on schools later. 
Um, it's also important to be aware of like the schools you're applying to and their like financial need um, things. Some schools are need aware, which means that if you apply for financial aid, that might affect your um, whether you get into that school or not. Excellent. So it sounds like overwhelmingly the advice from you all is to get that college essay done over the summer. And that's when you all did that. So that's amazing. Um, my next question for you all is how did you handle the college process when things got really stressful? How did, how did you handle it? Any suggestions for the group when they're feeling really stressed? So I guess I would suggest uh, spreading out uh, like the uh, entire process as much as possible because well, like I'm sure you've all had like experiences like uh, cramming homework in like the last night and like that's not good. And like when you're writing an essay that's supposed to like, well, I, I'm not really, but like uh, I'm exaggerating, like express like your uh, life, uh, life story, your whole life story in like 650 words, like you're not gonna be able to do a good job. So if you get started early, like the problems will uh, come about earlier also. So you'll have more time to ruminate and think about it. Like, um, like I started my uh, essays, I think like December before the year before, which like, I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that to anyone, but like the period of time I had like it to uh, consult with my mentor or I read over with my parents, like all the edits um, and all the problems that I like I discovered and uh, like fixed somehow, like it resulted in the uh, finished product being something that wasn't remotely similar to uh, the first draft at all. So like more time you have, like that's good. I think that's what I'm trying to say. And like, you're not gonna feel as stressed in a particular moment. Like, yeah, last two weeks uh, before I submitted my uh, application early, I don't think I really like stressed at all because like everything was already done. If you can uh, block out your time in December and uh, get to that, um, yeah, get to that point, then I think uh, you'll be in really good shape. Yeah, um, I had a similar experience to Isaac's where like there wasn't a point that I was really, really stressed be just because like of how great a job my like mentor had done like helping me. So um, yeah, but basically whenever you're stressed, like I think like the best thing to do is just cry, let it out, like go for a walk, come back. Yeah, like just like um, really general advice. Um, going off of what Isaac said, like there's like, I think my, uh, like biggest challenge like my biggest stressor was just how many parts there were to the college process because like before I was like okay so I know there's like applications and I know I probably like I just have to write an essay and I have to like answer a few questions and like I'm going to submit it and I completely did not know that first of all there would be like writing supplements so like for each college there would be like maybe like two or three like essay prompts that you would have to answer in like addition to your common app essay and for that, I would definitely plan for like the first half of senior year, like pretend like college applications is like a class, like a four block class and like a four block honors class actually, cause you're going to have to write like so many essays. It's going to be like insane. Cause you're gonna have to write like maybe like 600 words for like each school just as like a supplement. And another thing that I did not account for um, was sending scores. So like, I don't, I don't know, like if you have taken like the ACT or like SAT, or like you've taken like some like APs so you can like get credit at your schools, um, you actually need to send the scores like separately. You can't just uh, report them in the Common App. So you have to like, um, you have to like go on like the actual website and like send that out beforehand. So I would like make, a, I would definitely recommend like making a spreadsheet, like, hey, like did I send my like scores for this college? Did I send them for this college? Another thing is sending your transcript. I did, had no idea you had to send your transcript. Um, like I would definitely like make a spreadsheet that has like, hey, like this is when the application is due. Did I do the supplements? Did I send my scores? Did I like give my transcript? And then the last thing is financial aid. Um, get your FAFSA done, get your CSS form done. I only thought there was a FAFSA form. I had no idea there was a CSS form. And yeah, I would definitely recommend getting those done like as soon as possible once you've finalized your college list. And yeah, so like, I think my biggest thing was I just did not know there was like more stuff to the college process. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with what Amy and Isaac said again. Um, 
But in addition to that, um, I was also kind of like a part of the arts thing. So I sent a um, like a portfolio as a supplement to um, to the schools that accepted it. And it was kind of a lot to like research which schools accepted them, which schools didn't, because they also have like their own subset of like um, rules. Like some of them wanted in like a certain format of like pixels per picture. So it's really, really important to do that research in the beginning because um, like for a school, I had to ask the arts teacher at North to help me edit the pictures so that I'd actually be able to submit my portfolio. Um, so the earlier you have like um, what you need to do for each school, the easier it is. Um, and regarding supplements, a lot of times they ask fairly similar questions like probably half the schools I applied to had a why this, why do you want to attend to this institution as one of their questions. So once you kind of have like a layout going, it's very easy to keep going from that point. Um, but also it's very, very easy to get tunnel vision. So it's like you read it and your mentor might read it and it makes sense to you guys, but it's important to have kind of like a third reader because an outsider will read it and be like, this like doesn't make sense at all. Um, I think that happened a lot with my main essay. Um, and also like the more stressed you are, the harder it is to actually have like, um, like good writing. So I say definitely don't like put all your hobbies aside and go head first into the process. Like you need some sort of outlet where you can, you know, let out your frustration. It'll only help you more in the long run. Yeah, for I'll sure. Oh. oh, go ahead, Isaac. Um, I was just gonna say, yeah, like uh, uh, three things to add. Um, an outlet could be uh, anything, honestly. Like anything that you enjoy, it doesn't have to be um like necessarily like say productive because like if it makes you happy and it gets you ready for later, like it's good. Like for me, it was a professional wrestling this year, which sounds like really stupid, but if it works, it works. And um, also, uh, two more things about um the uh, essays. The uh, why essays, um, I would suggest you guys do like really uh, deep research into uh, into like the school, not just like facts or whatever, but like specific uh, professors that you'd want to study under uh, specific classes and why that appeals to you, why uh, the school fits you and why you fit them as well. Like it's sort of like a duality. Um, and um, second thing about the essays, um, I would say like, don't be afraid to swallow your pride because like the first read over your get over of your first draft, like it's probably gonna be a, like, it's gonna be a bit rough uh, coming from a different set of eyes. And um, I know like, it's hard to like, yeah, take criticism a lot of the times. Like I had that when uh, my mentor first read over, read over on my draft, but like, I would, yeah, I would really recommend uh, getting over that and uh, like seeing how you can improve and like, this can happen time and time and time again. So it really is a process, but yeah, like uh, be open to change, but uh, at the same time, um, follow your gut instinct about what to do, but don't let your pride uh, cloud over anything. Go ahead, Celine. Yeah, I just wanted to say, swallow your pride, but also this is your time to brag. Like if you read two books a week, and don't think to yourself, oh, this is silly. Like they won't care, they will care. Or like you take care of your siblings every day. Um, I don't know, do the chores around the house because uh, like a family member's sick and you have to take a lot of responsibility in the house um, in addition to your academics and your extracurriculars. It's very important to the colleges. It shows that you can take responsibility, so. Yes, yeah, oh, really, yeah I, I have like a lot to say on like the topic of essays because that was definitely like so challenging um just like another piece of advice for the why us essays like like what Isaac said like just research a lot and a, like a lot of the research actually doesn't come from the school's website like I found a lot of the important piece of pieces of advice for like interviews and for supplements to come from like sites like Quora like Reddit definitely make a Quora and Reddit account like it it's so helpful and um for the why us essays, like, I think the general formula of how I did it was like 40% me and like 60% the school. So I would spend like the beginning of the essay just kind of like, hey, like, this is what I did. Like, this is like the kind of person I am. So like, maybe like a basic example would be like, if the school like, lets you choose like, 
what it has like an open curriculum which is like I think it's like you can choose whatever classes you want to take then I would be like yeah in like high school I what I didn't really confine myself to one category I was like a math person but I was also an English person but I also like did like journalism and I would like say like how I was like I liked like all of these different areas and then connect it to like the school by saying like well like I saw at your school like you have like an open curriculum and like I feel like I'm really going to thrive there so like basically like use your high school experiences to like build a, an image of you in college and then connect it yeah um adding on to that um if any of you guys like had a particular uh, experience like visiting a school or like maybe a like sometime in your life like way before or like recently like you had an experience with the school and it shaped you up. Uh, don't be afraid to write about that and uh, how that alludes to uh, your character and uh, who you are. Yeah, definitely. Like when I, I actually ended up applying to Brandeis this year and I wrote about um, my experience with T2 and our visit in there too, so. Oh, you guys are so good. I love all of this so much, such good advice. Um, there's a question in the chat. If you want to just quickly go around, um, they're curious about how many colleges you ended up applying to and how many of them had supplements. And by supplements, we mean additional writing. So an additional short essay um, of any sort. Uh, okay, I'll go first. So I actually applied to an absurd amount of schools. I do not recommend you doing that. Um, I applied to 19 schools. Again, don't do that. Um, um, so, and I think only two of them didn't have a supplement. Um, and most of them, they range from, they either have like one, two, three supplements each. So. All right, so 17 out of 19 for you, Amy and Isaac. Sorry, I'm trying to find my spreadsheet. Like I honestly, I blanked on like the college process after this year, so. Um, I can go then. Uh, so for me, I only applied to three schools, but um, I was planning to apply to uh, probably like 17 more. Um, so three schools, um, UMass, Harvard, and uh, BU, like all three of them had supplements, but uh, UMass Amherst, uh, they have uh, optional supplements, which like, I guess in that case, like, I guess it's sort of optional, but it never hurts to uh, get it done with anyways. Yeah, we always say with the college process, optional is not really optional. <laughs> okay, I found my spreadsheet. Um, so I applied to, I applied to 15 schools and then, oh, and then over here I, I wrote if they had a supplement or not. So um, only McGill and, uh, wait, yeah, only McGill and Northeastern didn't have supplements. So it was 13 out of my 15 schools that had supplements. Oh yeah, also like another thing, like my mentor actually like made the spreadsheet for me and she included like a bunch of data on it. So yeah, just another shout out to her, yeah. That's awesome. So it sounds like you all had some sort of organization system that you were talking about, like a spreadsheet or an Excel doc where you're tracking, yes, deadlines, supplements, financial aid docs, so. That's great. Everybody should have one of those. And for the current juniors, we have a sample um, Excel sheet that I think we had shared with you, but if anybody needs it again, we certainly can do that. Um, so we don't have too much more time, but I, I would love, we have a question in the chat about the financial aid process and you guys touched on it a little bit, but just um, a little bit about your experience navigating the financial aid and merit aid piece um, and any advice you have in that regard. Uh, yeah, so basically public schools only require the FAFSA. You don't need to do the CSS. Say you're applying to UMass Amherst, you don't need CSS, only for private schools. Um, but the FAFSA is kind of, I'd say a little bit more on the surface. The CSS profile really goes into depth about um, the information. Like I believe the FAFSA only asks for 2019 of like tax info, like assets, um, that kind of stuff. And then CSS also asked for like your 2020, um, like employment situation, like how much money you were making in 2020. So I say definitely put like a good chunk of time aside to do those things. You don't want to leave it to the last minute because there's going to be some like random questioning. How am I supposed to know what 
to answer this. So you're going to need to do some research for that too. Um, but yeah, I believe, actually, I don't remember, I don't remember the deadlines for those are, but like, sub, like get a good amount of time to sit down and do those with your family. Um, and uh, especially for the uh, CSS profile, what I would recommend is a uh, submitting them for uh, like uh, each and individual school, uh, like right after you applied or like press the submit button or like right before the deadline because uh, they charge uh, for each school. So unless you're absolutely sure that you're gonna be applying, like I wouldn't recommend doing that because like uh, I didn't know that until after like I uh, submitted everything and that was uh, like $300 out of my pocket. So I'd like you guys to uh, be able to avoid that. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I didn't catch the question because I was sharing the spreadsheet with the. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Um, just any any advice in regards to the financial aid process? Um, Celine and Isaac sort of shared like making sure you're on top of deadlines and only submitting applications, financial aid applications to schools you're actually applying to to save money with the CSS yeah. profile. So I don't know if you have anything else to add. Oh yeah, I think my, yeah, like deadlines are like so important. Um, also one of the struggles that I had, I don't know, if, like I'm just very forgetful. So like I kept on forgetting my FAFSA password and it was like such a pain because like every single time I logged on, I would have to like get it sent. Um, so like, yeah, I think that doing the FAFSA and the CSS in just like one sitting is my like main advice because like um, logging into the CSS like all the time was such a pain because I was like, I'm also like, bad at like making decisions so like my college list like I actually like didn't really finalize it until like I think like December which is like really really late um I don't recommend it I think that everyone should like have it finalized at like August but like I just like was kind of lazy and like I didn't do a lot of research on the schools so yeah my main advice is just get your college list done so when you fill out the FAFSA and CSS you could just do it in one go and you won't ever have to go back to it. Great advice. Oh, I wish we had more time. So we're gonna, I wanna make sure we have time for our breakout rooms for the juniors. So one last question to end on, um, looking back over the past year, the past 18 months, um, if you could just share with us um, something that you're really proud of. Um, I'm proud of being invited to speak on this panel. Like, yeah, it, it's like, yeah, it's um, really an honor to uh, speak. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm also just proud of like um, a lot of like accomplishments in high school that I think like I wouldn't put on like the college thing because like there's no place to like put it, but like, I don't know, like, um, yeah, like uh, being able to like nominate like uh, like leaderships teachers for next year or like things like school council, just like things that I wasn't able to like put on my app, but like just like, like not like academic accomplishments mainly, but I feel like in high school, like um, a lot of it is like focused on like, oh, like, did you make the varsity team? Like, do you have a really good like ACT score? Like, did you, how many APs did you take? Which is like, um, looking back on it, like those aren't really like, the memories that I find myself really like gravitating to. Like what things that I feel more accomplished of are like, oh, I was able to like talk in front of like 200 people. Um, I was able to like, make friends with like uh the quiet kid in class it's like things like that that I think really make high school like well so like yeah like I know we just spent like a lot of time like talking about college but um I think that more importantly like um like instead of like thinking about college all the time also think about high school think about like all the teachers you're going to meet now think about like this amazing program and like all the friends you're going to meet here and amazing mentors yeah that was really cheesy but um that I think like the the best accomplishments uh, are like people I got to meet and like things I got to do. I love that so much. Oh, so good. Celine and I. Okay, I'll go next. I guess um, I'm just very proud of um, I guess where I am today. That sounds kind of cheesy too, but you know, it's just like the college process seems like this never-ending cycle. Um, especially this year, like I got, a, I got waitlisted from a bunch of places. Um, but now I'm going to college with a great scholarship that covers like more than 90% of my tuition. Like 
I say just do the best you can. It really doesn't matter where you end up going, like in the end, who knows, maybe we'll go to graduate school or whatever. Um, just do your best. Like, it doesn't matter where you go to as long as you do your best and, you know, accomplish what you actually want to accomplish and not what others want you to do. I think that's the most important thing. Like, it's so easy to get lost in that, especially like in Newton, where it's like such a competitive environment. Again, sounds cheesy, but do what you want to do. Go where you want to go, so. Awesome. All right, Isaac, want to leave us off? Yeah, um, I would definitely say the thing I'm proudest um, of uh, the most the past 18 months is just developing a new sense of like uh, character and grit, like, because like, I'm not going to, well, all could probably uh, attest to this, but I'm not going to lie, like, end of junior year and uh, like summer between senior year into senior year, like it's gonna be hard, but like if you uh, motivate yourself and like do everything you possibly can, like no matter what happens, like you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be proud of what you've accomplished. Like I'm a firm believer in that everyone has their uh, own destiny and like you'll end up in uh, some place where uh, you belong. But like the thing that always gets me is that like, if I know that I've done everything I can and I get to somewhere, then that's great. If I know that I've done everything that I can and I didn't get to somewhere, uh, somewhere uh, or the place I wanted to go, like that's, that's just reality, but at least I'm proud of the effort I've made. So I would definitely say, um, like, how do I put this? Like control what you can control, I think, yeah best way to put in. Yes, Celine. Also, I just want to add really quickly, um, if you need any help with any part of the process, just reach out. Like you have the school email. Um, I don't know if Isaac and Amy would agree to this. Yeah, I'd be, uh, but it's, I'd be uh, yeah. down, completely down. If it, it's, it's already a very stressful process. Like if, like us ask, answering a question you have makes it any easier for you, just reach out. Um, also, like, if you have any questions about women's colleges specifically, shoot me a message. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, just like, oh, one final thing. Um, yeah, I wish like someone had told me this in junior year, but like, about like the college process, it's very, it's like, in my friend group, it was like, just weirdly like competitive. Um, and like, I think that my best advice would just be like, don't talk about it with your friends because like, it is a big deal. It's like basically everyone's future and like it like makes or breaks friendships. And like, I know it sounds like stupid because it's just like college. It's just like the next step in your life. It's not even like what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. But um, yeah, basically like it caused a lot of drama and I like just don't think it's worth it. Um, yeah, and like Celine said, like feel free to reach out to me like I think I shared the spreadsheet with my personal email. So if you guys want, you could just like shoot me an email or like shoot me an email through like school and like I can like help you look over essays or like give you more advice. Yeah. That is so generous of you guys. That's amazing. Thank you. And for the juniors, I hope you do take them up on that because, you know, sort of like I said in the intro, like we do find that students learn the best, learn the most and learn the best from other students who've been through it. And um, these guys are all so inspiring and really did a great job the last 18 months. So thank you so, so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. And we hope that you'll continue to stay connected with T2 for all the years to come because you mean a lot to us and a lot to the program. So thank you. Um, so for the last 10 minutes or so, we are going to open the breakout rooms. So for mentors and mentees, you'll all go to your breakout rooms. For those of you that are on the wait list in the program, um, we'll leave, you'll stay in the big group. If you don't have any questions, you can hop off. Um, if you want to stay and get a question answered, feel free to stay in the big group, but we'll go ahead and open the breakout rooms. And then also just a reminder to make sure you schedule a time to meet before our next large group meeting while you're in your breakout rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And Amy, Celine, and Isaac, thank you again.